so no, we were never told it was a cure. When we originally talked with the doctors, they asked our expectations and we told them if we could gain some core strength so he could sit hands free, could be able to sit and use his hands and not have to use them for balance. Um, if we could improve his balance, if we could gain some use of, you know, maybe the, the hips and the thighs to be able to support him sitting um, and bladder and bowel awareness. In, in talking with, actually in reading a, um, an interview with a uh, gentleman who had a spinal cord injury, he said, not, being in a wheelchair is not the biggest issue in my life. It's not having bladder and bowel control. So we're looking towards anything we can do to support that for him. Um, and the doctors said those are reasonable. The doctors said those are reasonable expectations. Um, and that's what, that's what our hopes are. He's got huge upper body strength, and that's been, um, this is why this time was so good for the, to come for stem cells. He is physically, I think, at his peak. Um, he's, he's ready to turn another corner. So I think upper body, he's strong. Um, he's, I think he's ready for some new things, ready to be able to do th some new things. And I think the timing has just been perfect for him. Um, physically and, and mentally and everything, he's ready to, uh, to uh, excel or ex to take that big jump forward. Um, and so that's why this has worked out. This is just a great time for him. So when, when, uh, when we see little changes with Spencer, we know that that's going to, to equate to um, a level of a level of independence. So um, we started out with very little movements of his legs, which which you equate to things like bed sores. Um, and and when we started to get the the uh, movement of his legs, we started to get more movement in his legs. We started to get him rolling over. Our pediatrician was excited because that dramatically improved his quality of life as far as, as not having to worry about bed sores, being able to turn himself over at night. Um, it sounds very little, it's huge. How many people have died from bed sores, the infections and stuff? So by eliminating that from his life, that little tiny bit has made a big difference for his life. In a recent um, medical appointment, the doctor said, okay, so how does he get, a, get around at home? Well, he bum scoots, he crawls, he, he's able to get around. He said that's perfect. He can have a sense of independence or he can be independent in his own home with that ability to be able to get around. And he said, and then if he's out and he's in a wheelchair, then he's independent out there. Um, and so each gain is, is huge for him. Um, and each improvement means that much more that he's going to be able to do and be more typical. We don't believe that we'll get every gain that we would want for our son. Um, as I said, I, he's not going to walk out the door. If he does, I'll be the biggest, the su most surprised person around. Um, I believe this is a stepping stone for him. I believe that this is a, a foundational part for his life. Um, and, and so this is the start of something big for him. Potentially, if things open up closer to home, that would be awesome. However, um, Bake has been doing it for so many years. They've learned so much that unless they're willing to sell that technology or that knowledge, um, I think that other facilities are further behind. And so only if Bake opens a facility in our backyard would it actually be close enough for us to come or if there's maybe in Europe would be closer for us to come again. Um, but yeah, I believe that, that uh, this is the start of, of a couple of treatments. I don't know how many um, for him. And I, I believe it's something that we would try until we see no results. And then we know that we've exhausted that avenue. We've been here three and a half weeks. So he's had five IV treatments um, every about four to five days. Uh, so he's undergone just the five IVs. So we've undergone the five treatments. Um, we've seen some improvements, I think, in the combination of the, f the physical therapy, which uh, he's done sit-ups and things to strengthen his core um, body to gain balance, to gain control. The acupuncture 
has been excellent. We've seen lots of movement in his legs during the acupuncture. The wave therapy has been, has been good. He's taken well to all of it. And so I think in combination with early signs from the stem cells, I don't think the stem cells have yet done their job. And I, everything I've read and understand about it, I think that's gonna take a few months. But I think we've seen some good starts and the doctors are encouraged by the changes that they've seen and expect those changes to continue. His fourth injection was his peak injection, is probably what I'd call it. Um, he gained lots of energy after that injection and um, he was very enthusiastic and, and um, I, I called it wired. Didn't sleep as much as he was, was talking lots, was doing circles on the floor. Um, and so I think that's probably his, that's been his biggest injection. And that's between the th third and the fourth, those were the biggest injections that we saw. The first couple didn't see a lot of, of um, changes in him, but the third and fourth one were the big ones for him. Yeah. Not dramatically, he was getting up earlier, but um, he was still able to sleep between 10, about 10 hours a night, which is a little less for him but uh, at least he was getting that a couple of restless nights after the stem cells. Um, in talking with adults who've undergone it, that's pretty normal. And actually he managed it probably even better than they did because they were staying up till two, three in the morning, sometimes after the treatments, mm -hmm. not able to sleep. So um, altered it a bit, but nothing huge in a day or so. And then he was back into his, his typical routine. So, <laughs> so. Um, during his acupuncture, he decided he needed more needles in his legs. And so he proceeded to tell me that he needed some more needles in his arms. He needed more, he needed more needles in his legs. And so we actually did talk with the, the translator who talked with the therapist and decided that in the next course of treatment, we would add a few extra needles, a few extra points to it. So I'm sure it's not here, it's something they hear from every therapist or from every patient, but in Spencer's case, he knew he needed some more needles and so he was ready for, for the next step. He took to all of it. Um, he really, I think, knew that this was something good for him and something that was helpful for him. And that's been him all his life. If he knew it was something that was good for him that was going to make a difference for him, he was, was interested in doing it. So Owen set up the obstacle course for him, or the house as he calls it, to do push-ups. Mark was actually telling me this one and, and set up the, the cushions for him to do push-ups. And he does five or six, and while Owen's getting ready, and, and uh, um, looks at Owen and says, how many more do you want me to do? And so, yeah, Owen was amazed at, at his upper body strength, but he has, that has developed further down, and he's able to, um, to sit better, and uh, as you saw today, even to, to hold himself up to be able to stand, and, and as Owen keeps saying, keep balance, keep balance, so he's able to do that a lot more as well. Before, typically what we've done is trying to get him into kneeling. So we've worked at, at um, getting him into a crawling position or a kneeling position, um, never trying to get him into standing on his own. Uh, so seeing that with Owen is pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, he's supported in that position. However, that's, um, that's a, a huge gain for him to, to stand up and that freedom to stand without being braced, really. Um, okay, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. We think it's probably somewhere around the hip, um, just below the hip. We are finding um, sensation points, so um, we can sort of scratch his leg, or I know we've had our doctor um, pinch his toe, and you see the other leg react. Um, and so it, we've one of the interesting things we saw with him was in the beginning we didn't see a lot of goosebumps on his legs goosebumps is a neurological it's triggered neurologically right so it's a it's a message that comes down from the brain for the skin to to become bumpy when when it's cold and so uh, one of the things we've noticed with him as we've been doing more therapies with him is that the goosebumps are patchy throughout his leg, but it continues to, to grow. So where we were seeing some on his hips, we're now seeing it further down and, and further along the leg. So 
Um, that's one of the things we've noticed as we've developed, and that's something we'll keep watch of when we go home to see if we've got more of that information coming down to the skin and further down. So um, he's, he, that's something new that he's developed here. <laughs> um, so the, the upper body or the core strength to be able to lift his hips up and swing his legs is not something he's done before. Um, it, part of it is his personality, I think, has developed even more, even stronger here. But it's also, um, I think, that he, when he recognizes he can do something, he continues to build on that. And so he's, that's something that he's figured out he can do. Thought it was funny to, to kick the... Uh, the uh, okay, professor, okay. the very distinguished professor, and uh, got a laugh of it out of it and continued on. <laughs> With